Okay, so today we are going to talk about the only variable which matters in being a better kite surfer. <laughs> now it's something that I've noticed when back when I was really really teaching kite surfing all the time something I noticed a lot was that people were so focused on what I would call the technical stuff it was always a case of okay where where exactly do I point my board when I'm water starting at what angle do I want my kite um you know where do my hands need to be where does my body need to be in what position do I need to be in all these what I would call technical details and what I interestingly found after years and years of coaching people to do this was that the most effective way of actually getting people, let's say, up and riding or, you know, pulling off that next trick or whatever they wanted to do was to cut away as much of the technical stuff as was, as was possible. Get rid of it, throw it out, especially when we're on the beach, which is when we're on the beach, get rid of as much of it as possible and ask people to instead to feel what they were doing to be present inside their bodies, inside their own skin, inside their own meat, if you like, and have an image of what they were trying to do in their head. And then forget about everything, forget about absolutely everything they could in the outside world and let their bodies go for it. So what we normally do to do, this is actually much more difficult than you think because, because our brain is this kind of machine which, which, which wants to focus on these technical details. And it's always telling our body, you should be focusing on this, you should be focusing on that, you should be thinking about this, why aren't you, why aren't you doing this, you idiot? And what that does, it takes us out of our body. It takes us out of this feeling that we're up here rather than in here. So what we do to try and, try and expedite this process is often give them a really, really simple task to do at the same time as they were trying to do something really, really complex. Now, a great example of this is, let's say, the water stop. You could easily translate it into any sport, any activity. You know, changing gears in a car, when you're learning to do that, is a great example. So we'd say, again, take an example of the water stop. What I want you to do is go out there, pick, a, pick, a, pick your favorite song, and sing that song whilst you are doing the water start. At the top of your lungs, you know, rah, blast it out on the water. I don't care, it's fine, don't really hear you over the wind. Or another simple exercise would be what I would call bish bash bosh, where you'd say, okay, well, as soon as the kite comes back to its kind of starting point, it's bish, and I want you to say it out loud. As soon as it passes through 12 o'clock, that's bosh, and as soon as it hits the bottom of the window, that's bish, bosh, bash, bash, whatever, the other one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then what we're trying to do is, is make it impossible for their brain to focus on the technical stuff. So suddenly they're focusing on the words of the song they're trying to sing or, you know, this bish, when they should say bish, bash, bosh exactly, rather than focusing on where exactly should my board be pointed, where exactly should my arms be, where exactly should my head be, where should my hips be. And the result of this was that these people absolutely flew. They absolutely flew through their training. So the obvious extension of this for me, and this was, Star Wars took me is really, really weird. You know, how on earth can this be? But the obvious extension for this became that the idea of instructing and learning isn't about how much technical information I, you know, I or your instructor or whatever can give you. It's about getting the student back into their body so they can feel how their body works. Now, let me give you an example of this. You know, let's imagine you're trying to master the golf swing. Okay. And I tell you. Well, that was a great swing, but you've got to relax this muscle here slightly and tense up this muscle here slightly ever so much as you're doing it, which is literally what I'm doing when I'm telling you to adjust your swing slightly. The body doesn't work like that. It's actually impossible for the brain to even have a concept of what that is. So this is why this kind of technical information doesn't work so well. But if I can tell you, look, feel relaxed, feel the swing, feel where the tension is and try and eliminate it, try and relax it. You can do that. You know, your body is aware of that on an internal level. Rather than trying to tense up individual muscles, it can just, okay, there's tension here. Let's get rid of it. Let's loosen off that part of the swing. Now, each body is different. And this is why I can't tell you exactly what to do. And I say, even if I could, the human body doesn't work like that. It cannot relax a specific muscle during a complex action. It just doesn't work. And again, think about this. When you are, when you are doing something and you're in that kind of state of flow, you know, whether it be kite surfing and you're riding a wave, you know, or you're, you're 
on stage speaking and you're just in that in that state of flow where everything just happens or you're you're coding as a computer programmer and you're just in the zone whatever think about it are you actually thinking about what you are doing at that point are you focusing on the technical stuff at all i guarantee you if you're in a state of flow you are not because if you are you're not in a state of flow by default it's just impossible so this state of flow is actually when those parts of the brain shut down, those parts of the brain switch off, and you're left with kind of what I'd call instinct, your instinctive brain. And that's what leads to the flow state. That's what leads to you doing things effortlessly. You know, and I have this belief that your body knows what to do. It just has to be allowed to do it. And what happens is that the brain gets in the way of the body, the software in the brain gets in the way of the body, the hardware doing what it needs to do. And again, it's that classic example, you know, you, you are, you're in the moment, you're, let's say you're on a wave, great example, you're on a wave, surfing a wave, you're going down the wave, you are, everything's epic, you flow, beautiful, everything's fine, and suddenly a thought enters your head, oh my God, what happens if, and I guarantee you at that moment, that's the moment you fall off. That's the moment everything goes wrong. That's the moment, boom, you explode in a big, you know, wipe out and, and get, get put in the tumble dryer. Because suddenly your brain's kicked in. It's let, it's tried to override your body's natural wisdom. Your body knows what to do. Your brain will stop it from doing that once it knows what to do. And that's the caveat on this. So again, what I'm trying to say here is that most people, when they're learning a new skill, be it kite surfing or whatever, they tend to focus on the software. Whereas what I realized as I was teaching Kaiser is that really we should be looking at the hardware. Why? Because if your body knows what to do and we can get it to a point where it knows what to do, and that's actually fairly easy, then really by extension, the next thing we should be looking at is upgrading that hardware so it can do it better. So this is where I come back to the most important variable in being a better kite surf, in being a better anything, is upgrading your hardware. If you make your reflexes faster, if you make your muscles stronger and more resistant to injury, if you make your brain work better, if you've got more focus, if you can learn faster, if you can do all this, you can't help but be better at whatever it is you're trying to do. And you're giving your hardware, your hardware, because it's upgraded, is giving you more bandwidth for the software to take effect. So again, when I'm teaching someone to kite surf or do anything now, the first place I always start now is the hardware. Look, is your hardware in a state where the software can be programmed? Because that's more important, you know. And a great example is if, you, if you've come down to learn to kite surf, but you can't bend enough to get the board on your feet, it's a non-starter. You know, and this is kind of the, the ultimate abstraction of this argument. So the first place to look at is your own hardware. Can we upgrade this hardware to then make the software work? And again, it goes back to this idea that looking, studying, at fl studying the flow state, and when people are in flow, they are not using software as we know it, you know, as we think of it. They're not understanding the technical details, all those other bits. So, so why don't we focus on the hardware and then try and get ourselves into a state of flow, which is, as I say, is actually really, really easy. It's just about distracting the brain. <laughs> and I'm sure you've had this, you know, where you've, you've had a state, and if you think back to a point where you have been in a state of flow, and for most of us, could have been a good, good long line. At least turn up much more when we're kids than when we're older. And I'm sure at that point, you were not thinking. You weren't in your head. You weren't kind of, oh, rah, rah, you know, everything's... What, what's this? What's that? What happens if I do this? What, what, what could go wrong? What am I having for tea? What did my wife or boyfriend say to me this morning? You know, you're not there. You are totally 100% in your body, in your hardware. So if we can get you there and then upgrade your hardware, that's all that actually matters. Now, obviously, I have a way for you to upgrade your hardware. I'm sure you're waiting for it. It's in the link, it's in the description below. You can go down there and click, and there's a free book you can grab, which runs you through exactly. It's called Post 40 Secrets. It's designed for people after 40, and it's full of workouts, things you can do to really, really take your hardware to the next level. As I say, it's free in the description. Go and grab that. It's awesome. Um, but so this is what I wanted to really, really hammer home today, guys, that this... 
This kite surfing, especially kite surfing, is, is a is a supreme example of this because when we're kite surfing, we are hitting the flows, we're hitting that flow state time and time and time and time again. And when you're in that flow state, it's not about how much technical knowledge you have. In fact, that's that's going to hurt you having more technical knowledge. It's going to lead to more questions. At that point, it's hand over to the hardware, sit back on automatic pilot, and you'll 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 know this. You're almost an observer in your own body. If you ever really had a really, really kind of mind-blowing flow experience, you know at that point it's almost out of body. You're almost looking down on yourself. You know, wow, this guy's really good. Oh, shit, it's me. Um, and that's certainly the case for me, and it's certainly the case for a lot of people that I talk to. It's this kind of this idea that, wow, you know, I'm not in charge anymore. My body is just doing this for me. And often it's this time dilation that goes with it that's due to that effect. So this is why I always, 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 always focus on the hardware first. Try and remove the software part. Now, before you all start shouting at me, does this mean that software isn't important, that technical knowledge isn't important? No, no, because of course, you know, your body has to know what to do. But, but again, for me, that's not about going out and studying videos on YouTube in Mindless. And this is why I've stopped doing technical videos, because I realized this actually isn't helping people. What is actually more important for me is, is observing someone doing it correctly and then translating the feeling of that into our body, which humans are actually very, very good at doing. What would it feel like to be in that position? So again, the riding at wind is a classic example. Look at someone riding at wind. That, that's the position their body is in. What would that feel like in my body and how should that feel on the water? And then when you're actually doing it, just try and recapture that feeling. Humans are very good at that. We're very bad at suddenly, oh, well, the board's not quite, the board's one degree off downwind where it needs to be, or my hips are, are two degrees out of alignment, or, you know, my, my back foot's not bent enough. Because where are you? You're there. You're there. We need to switch that, that loop off and put you back down here in your stomach, where you always are when that sense of flow hits. So, again, this is kind of my, my big... This was a huge aha moment for me, both in teaching and in doing. You know, and certainly when I'm teaching anything now, this is the first place I start. I really don't bother with it. There's a little technical stuff like, look at him. That's how you do it. Feel what that would feel like. Can you feel it? Almost everyone, yes. Yes, I can. If not, you just put them in that position. Right? That's what it will feel like. Okay, cool. Now recreate that feeling out there. But I don't need to think about recreating it. I want you to forget about it. Your body now knows. Forget about it. So again, this is kind of why I've stepped away from technical stuff. And a, gr a great example of this is the golf swing. If you went and read every single word ever written about how to have the perfect golf swing, technically, I think you'd probably spend the rest of your life doing it. There's been so much written on this. Yet if you look at two different professional golfers, their swing could be entirely different, yet just as effective. So there is no perfect golf swing. Because on a very, very simple level, my arms are a different length to your arms. So the actual dynamics of how that swing works are going to be very different for me and you. You know, my, my, I'll have tension in different muscles. My skeleton structure naturally will have tension at different points to other points. So trying to nail down the perfect golf swing is impossible. It might be a perfect one for me or a perfect one for you, but you've got to find that yourself. It much, much easier. Say, look. That's, that's a really good swing. Try and do something similar to that. Cool. Gone in. Fine. Now relax. Think about something else and just let your body take it away. Boom, 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 boom. And I guarantee if you try this with anything, not just kite surfing, golf, tennis, um, and this was actually a lot of this wisdom was taken from um, the inner game of golf and the inner game of tennis because that guy coached in this exact way, following a similar journey to me where he's teaching all the technical stuff and wondering, why the hell is this not working? Because humans can't translate technical knowledge into physical feedback and physical movement. So the takeaway I'm trying to get you to, to, to see from this is focus on the hardware. Again, book down below, free, go and grab that. <laughs> um, but focus on that. Because if you can upgrade that and then just do what, as simple as what I've said, go down the beach, check out some water style if you're struggling with the water style. Ah, okay. Now, yeah, with things more technical, when you come to like, you know, super, super 340 handle passes and F-16s and things like that, you need to watch a video which breaks it down in slow motion so you can actually understand what's going on. But again, 
Don't spend hours. Oh, where do I put my hand on the bar? Where do I, you know, where do my, what, what exact angle does my body need to be at? You know, what exact angle, where does my head need to be? What, what, should, what should it feel like? And yeah, Eric, you're right. Watching yourself on video is gold. It's gold. But again, don't over focus on it. Ah, cool. Right, I'm doing that. I can see now. Yeah, I can see what I'm doing wrong. And actually, I could, now I think back to it, I could feel that at the time. I felt awkward. It felt weird. Now I understand why. So again, that idea of watching yourself on video, yeah, it's gold, but don't, and this is what I used to do. I used to, every time I go kiting, I would take a, you know, a GoPro out and uh, come back and sit for hours and analyze everything I was trying to do. And I got nowhere. I got absolutely you no, know, I got someone else to take a video of me. Ah, that's what it should look like. Ah, I can see exactly what I'm doing wrong there. Because I can feel, I can feel that as I'm doing it, that it feels wrong. So just correct that. Go for the feeling rather than the actual technical position. Right, I've got it. Boom. Off we go. Off we go. Off we go. And this is now how I teach myself. This is now how I teach anyone that comes to me. And this is this is you know how when I'm teaching anything, this is where I start. Start with the hardware because you don't have to think about it. It's just there. It just works for you underneath everything else going on. So. That's enough banging on for me for today. <laughs> it's a subject that I get really passionate about because it's something that I've really, you know, it, it's, it was a total departure for me at the time. And it's something that I've had so much success with since then, as in teaching myself, teaching people, that it just needs to be out there. We are focusing on the wrong things. Um, and you can see that if you type into YouTube, you know, how to do anything. It's all technical stuff. And I don't think it generally helps. You need to know what you're doing, obviously, but then just go and do it. And try and forget about what you're supposed to be doing. Because you are, you know that you've taken that in by osmosis. Your body now knows what to do. Cool. Go and do it. Go and do it. And, and look for the feeling. Look for the tension in your muscles. Where does it feel awkward? And as Eric says, if you can video yourself to see yourself doing it. So you can actually, ah, okay, I felt weird here. And that's why. Because my bum was sticking out. I was in the, sh the shitting position rather than the shagging position, for example. Then that's easy to correct. If it's me telling you, push your hips forward by 12 degrees. How the hell do I, I don't even know how to do that. I can't, I can't feel how I could possibly do that in this position because it just feels, it would, at the moment, it feels so unnatural. Just relax, relax. Have an idea of what you're trying to get to. Let your body do it because there's a reason why the positions, let's say in kites, why we kite surf in that position because it's the easiest and the most comfortable position to do it. So your body naturally wants to get into that position. But our brain, well, let's say, oh my God, this cat's going to pull me away. It's going to do this, it's going to do that, it's going to do that. That's it up here. And you can actually see it when you when someone's on the water. They're up there because they're, and they're kind of looking, you know, you know, someone who's someone who's actually got it. They're not, oh, what's going on around here? Blah, blah, blah. Same with anything. Same, you know, again, golf, tennis, whatever. You can really tell the difference between someone who's playing from the head and someone who's playing from their stomach. Huge, huge difference. Now, again, really simple exercise you can try. We learned this in the Marines. And they teach this in special forces, and it's sort of the core of martial arts. Is just shift your level of awareness. You know, if, you, if I asked you now, where are you? Where do you reside? You. And most people would point there. That's where I sit. That's where I am. That's where me. Well, the problem there is that's your head. That's you thinking all the time. What we need to do is drop that awareness down into the stomach. It sounds really weird. It sounds really woo-woo and really hippie. But if you can just, and the easy way to do it is breathe into your stomach. Just breathe deeply into your stomach and shift your awareness into your stomach so you're feeling from your stomach. And if you try and do that when you're on the water, this happens effortlessly. So that's it for me, guys. That's it for today. Thank you for being here. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I say, if you want to look at upgrading the hardware, books down below. Apart from that, depending on where you're watching or listening to this, you know, normal stuff, subscribe, like, thumbs up, whatever. Follow wherever you are, whatever you're doing, <laughs> whichever the button to push is. Um, and uh, I will catch you next time. Cheers, Eric. Cheers, Thorsten. Cheers, everyone who was here. And I will speak to you next week. <laughs>